right, cool. Welcome, everyone, to uh, Monday. Monday, the week of Thanksgiving, at least here in the United States, which means that I'll be around. Are we here through Wednesday, Margaret? I guess I should push the button here. So if you go to our awesome, amazing website, fmtraining.tv, and hit the left tab over here, it's so great because uh, – you know why today's special? Because there will be probably a lot of Claire's people. They're supposed to be on vacation or off, and some of them have been dying to know what I've been doing. And so I know several of them are here watching us stealthily, so I expect all of you to behave yourselves. If you press the button over here, you can see the uh, live data. This is data coming out of the FileMaker database in real time. Pretty awesome. So we eat our own dog food. It's actually why I can do the training as I've been eating the dog food for a lot of years now. It's also why when things get screwed up, I get kind of mm, unhappy about it, right? Uh, 33 years of doing FileMaker. I'm old. In fact, my team threatened to get me a walker. A walker so I could walk. Yeah, they walk to walk to work in the snow barefoot. So yes, we're looking forward to that. So today's conversation is the use of low yield, low yield tactical nuclear weapons within the FileMaker platform. Uh, we've had this topic before. In fact, I brought it up with Christian, and Christian was like the guy who does the wolf pack and stuff. He goes, oh, yeah, these are like nukes. And, and he said the same thing. He's like, nukes in your FileMaker database. I said, man, that's exactly the analogy we use. So um, today and tomorrow we have the live stream. Then we're off for three days which will be good. If you're a more of a senior developer and you want to chime in here, or if you're a junior -y or intermediate developer and you have ideas or thoughts on the topic, today's a great day for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop open my notes here real quick, and we're gonna make notes as we go. Today's conversation are the low yield nukes in your FileMaker database. Generally using nuclear weapons in FileMaker or on other platform is generally not a good thing. And so today's conversation was kind of a recap because we ran this not too long ago. The things that you could do as a developer to get yourself in a lot of trouble or to cause you a lot of heartache and anguish. Let's talk about the FileMaker platform. So things to be aware of. So as a developer, I would say that, and I say this very carefully, if you have a customer that insists they must have a delete button that deletes, <laughs> that really deletes records, this is a very dangerous thing to have in your FileMaker solution. What I want to point out is that right here is the red phone. Doo, doo, doo. The red phone can connect to a, a wide variety of people. What you don't want is your customers using their red phone to call you. And so today's conversation is so much about your pain and agony, but having it splash over to your customers. And then your customers, if, if you're an in-house developer, it's other people in the company. You don't want whoever's using your solution to have negative thoughts about you right? As if, if you can prevent it, right? The idea is that you can prevent some of the angst that your that your users feel. And that's kind of what this conversation is about. Not, not turning loose a bomb in your FileMaker solution. Deleting records is the one way, the road to hell. Because once you have records that get deleted, you're forever wondering if someone says, I swore I type, I put the data in the database. I swear I put it in there and now it's not there anymore. That will happen to you. It happens to every last developer on the planet at some point. For me, so many years, it's happened five or eight times over 30 years at least. A couple times where people said, well, maybe I was just drinking too much. I've had people who were drinking uh, considerable amounts of adult beverages and doing data entry, and then they, whatever happened. But there are times when FileMaker may not save things or, say, or behave in a way you expect. But what you're trying to do is remove all the possibilities where the user presses a delete button or a delete script or something like that, and it inadvertently deletes something they weren't expecting. So a lot of times with delete records, what I always tell people, and Margaret, if you do, since you're back at your desk, if you have questions, you want to just wave your hand and yell at me, okay? Um, what you want to do with records that are supposed to be deleted is try to convince your customer that you want to change the status of the record. So for example, someone says, I really hate this customer. I really hate blah, 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 right? We'll pick on the next person over here, Hot Air Balloon Ken. Hot Air Balloon Ken flies the slowest balloons on the planet. He's so slow. I hate Ken. I never want to talk to Ken ever again. Ken's a great guy, but doesn't mean that someone doesn't like the way he flies. So they say, I'm going to delete Ken out of my database. Well, if you delete the record out of your database, the next person in your organization, then Ken calls back a week later. You're not there. Someone else is there. They don't know that Ken was ever in the database, and they have no reason to know that he's a troublemaker with a hot air balloon, right? And so what you want to do is change the status of the record, leave the record in there. So there's a paper trail, paper trail, 
computer electronic paper trail of what got Ken to that place. He's, you know, what is that line from Top Gun? A history of high speed passes over five air controlled towers and one admiral's daughter, right? That's Ken in the hot air balloon. You want to have a history of that just because you don't want Ken in the Navy anymore flying fighter jets. It doesn't mean you delete him out of the database. You just simply notate that he flies fast and lower, whatever he does, right? So you don't want to delete the records. If the customer insists that they you del the records must be deleted, you may want to think about creating a, <clears throat> a garbage uh, table or a garbage file or um, <clears throat> where all the dead records go. So you don't really delete them. You just move them, okay? I've also done that before. It's kind of a pain to do it because you have to make sure you move the data, you don't miss fields and stuff. But then they do get removed out of the one table, which could be problematic. You move them somewhere else, but it's always a bad, just a generally a bad idea to del unless you unless you're building a system and you're testing it and the users are testing. You have sample test records, then those could be deleted, right? I get that, or blank records that be deleted. But once again, you got to be careful with that. Other issues that you run into in the FileMaker platform that you want to watch out for, along with the delete button, is the cascading deletes. And this, I have demonstrated this to be a faulty feature of FileMaker that I didn't want to wrestle with FileMakers. I'm sure they told me it, it, it worked as expected. And I'm assuming it still does this. It did this a couple of years ago. And, and like even Christian Olson, the first thing he said today, I said, Christian, I'm about to do a show on nuclear weapons. And he goes, cascading deletes was the first thing that came out of his mouth, number one, okay? And so let's talk about what cascading deletes are. So if I go over here to the, the bombs file we were working on, bomb as in bill of materials, not exploding bombs. You missed that show. We were talking about building bill of materials. Um, if I go to command shift D field definitions, like a file manage database and I got a relationship. So here is where it gets interesting. So say, remember we talked about, I'm going to rewind this. So everyone remembers this. If you're building a layout, if, if you're following my advice and you're kind of beginner intermediate and you're building a, you have a layout, the layout should always attach to an anchor. These are the anchors. The buoys are the pieces that come off. Those are the supporting bits that you need to support the layout. And then one of you asked, it was David or someone asked, or it was Stu, asked the question, well, if you have two layouts and really the base table, the base, the table is the same. So it's like this bomb screen we have, which this is, but they have this other bomb screen when they're, and they're both pretty intense layouts and they have a lot of different data on them and they're really different and maybe different users, different people with different roles in the company use them. We came up with the thought, should I combine everything? So you see, have one big table occurrence group, like where all these, like if I come over here and I, and I just, I'm just going to throw this up so you visually have an idea. So you have something like this and they're all connected and then you have a bunch more, they're all connected and you have this big ugly one and it has like 20 or 30 items on it, right? Or should you take this and maybe duplicate the whole thing, move it down here, there we go, and these two right here will move down. So what you do is you could duplicate the, the table occurrence, the base table, right? Now, I'm going somewhere with this. This is actually in my book. So if those of you read my book recently and you remember this, don't worry about it. But what you could do is like, well, I only need, you know, I don't need these up here on this one, but I, oh, <laughs> I don't need these two up here, remove, but I need them up down here along with these ones right here. So you only have the ones that you really need, right? And so this is bomb kit one. This is bomb kit two. We change the numbers. Now, here is the super duper crazy rub on this thing. That's the bug that crashes. <laughs> we were running into that the other day. The new version of FileMaker allegedly fixes that, right? So if you drag a relationship, let me go back over here. Let me show you what happens over here. So uh, I just blew myself at the tiny little bits. Ken, are you, can we get Ken in? I almost need Ken in here just to keep me out of trouble. Last time we had this problem, it was all his fault. Remember how we talk about FileMaker, it's always context, 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 right? So say we're on a layout that's attached to this. This one down here, it's a separate deal. I'm going to call it T11, okay? And then I'm going to call this T11A. Oops, I'm going to call this T11A, right? So I got T1, T11, T11, right? Um, this so they're different. You really understand they're different. So on this one right here, if I double-click this, 
you have this cascading add function. You can also have cascading delete. So if you delete the record over here, it's going to go over here and find the related records and shoot them too. Okay. And you're like, oh, that's a good idea. That way we don't have orphan records. And in the, in the chapter of my book, I said orphans are okay. Orphans are fine. Because what happens is that the way FileMaker is, it works everywhere, it's always about context. Almost always it's about context. That's why people sometimes like that SQL, built-in SQL capability in FileMaker, where you give it an SQL statement, FileMaker translates it and gives, hey, there's Ken. Ken, feel free to mute yourself or unmute yourself as necessary. So you there? I heard you. I got to keep you out of trouble. Yeah, your backup has arrived. Yeah, back, I read it, that backup has arrived. So what happens is that when you're here, on a, say you're on a layout that belongs to that bomb, that table occurrence, right? This is a table of occurrence group. That's a table of occurrence. This is the anchor. These are the buoys. I'm on a layout that is attached here. Everything I should see and everything that should be effective should be limited to the stuff that is connected right here. That's the whole point. FileMaker if you have a spider diagram and you're on a spot, it has to evaluate all the relationships, right? I know some of you were like having a hard time believing that it would do that. It does that, right? And so by breaking things down, A, it's simpler to, to teach beginners and intermediate developers how to make, make a database, make the relationship graph, have it make sense because we give you some rules, right? But we don't, we don't ever cross connect like this item and this item. And I don't cross connect them like that or something. Because then as you start to rent, this is now one group. So it's evaluating everything. It's getting a lot more complicated. So you don't want that, right? You really don't want that. And so if you're on a layout that's here, and then you have another layout that's over here, right? I'm, tr I'm trying to be careful. These little post-it notes in the background roll down like that. So Ken, I think you're aware of this or maybe not. So let's talk about this real quick. So I'm going to double click this one right here. It has cascading deletes turned on. So if I'm on a layout attached to this layout, right, this table occurrence right here, and I did a delete a record out of bomb kit, it's supposed to delete the related record here. Right? Makes sense? That's my if, understanding, yes. Okay. And then if I'm over here, and Ken, I'm going to pick on you because I, okay. need a, I need a good sport, and I want you to answer this honestly, okay, because you can already tell that the answer is not obvious what's about to happen. I'm over here. I'm actually, I'm going to hit okay real quick and save the changes. <laughs> All right. So uh, before it blows up again, I'm on a layout that's here. I, I built this layout. The customers are happy. I have this other group of users. They need different things on screen. I'm going to set them up over here. Over here, I have cascading deletes turned off. Okay. So if I delete a record here, should it delete the cascading record uh, over here on this related record right here? It should not. And it will. Not always, but it's done it. I built brand new files and done have done this. And 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 so where they say context is everything. Like if you write a script, it's all about context. It's all about con what layout you're on, what record you're on, what window you're on, what the source state is, what field you might be in. It's all about context. Where are you? Okay. And so if you're here, then Settings over here should not in any way affect settings over here. In this area of cascading deletes, they absolutely will, and it'll blow your sky high, and you won't know why records have been, why the dog ate your homework, why the records are gone, okay? We don't turn it, and, and of course, someone would then come to me and say, well, that's the way it's supposed to work. Excuse me, all a FileMaker, with the very few exceptions, is context sensitive. So you're saying that you built part of the product that's not context sensitive. Yeah, we did it that way on purpose because we're brilliant. Uh-uh. It's been this way for years. It's a known commodity in the platform. And so if you turn on the cascading delete anywhere, whenever you're missing records, it's suspect, especially if you have a similar base anchor uh, table. Because for whatever reason, it'll say, it should come down. You're on a layout here. It should say, ah, no cascading deletes. But sometimes it'll come up here and go, hey, there's a cascading delete. Never mind that you're on a layout and a script and your context is down here. It comes up in here and looks and sees it and then starts deleting things. I'm telling you, 
This is an unintended nuclear weapon that someone shoved in the trunk of your car and you're driving around with bouncing down the road and you're bouncing the bomb in the back of your car. Don't put it in there. Don't put it in there. It might go off. Just don't. Okay. Questions. Not to, not to mention the fact that it's they're, they're so similar. You could easily be in the wrong context, even if it worked as we think it should. When you I could easily be yeah, in the wrong place. When I did this, well, I was going to write about this in the book, and I said, you know, before I write about it in a book, I better be double super sure. So I created a brand new file, and it was very precise, and I was able to get it to do to delete things incorrectly, and then I felt good about writing about it because I had a video sample of it happening. I had a video of it actually happening. And so it's just one of those little things that the platform's so great. It does so many great things. It's this little piece. And generally, what do we say over here? You generally shouldn't be deleting records anyway because it's already this this recommendation is already in line with our other recommendations. I feel confident saying that don't delete records. If you have to delete a record, absolutely don't use a, a cascading delete because you ab it will absolutely fire when you don't want it to. Um, I've had I've had conversations with engineers. I, okay, so engineers named William Vaughn doesn't work here anymore. Nice guy comes to me says, "Hey, customer says records are being deleted." I said, "You've got a." I, I go, "You have a delete and a script step somewhere." No, I don't. Okay, I said it's that, or you have a cascading delete turned on. Oh, I would never turn it on. Fine. I said, "Go check. Run through base almost. Do something. Go check." He comes back like this. He goes, ah, "You know, boss, you were right." The customer had administrative access to the file, and I wasn't there, and they went in and decided they would just turn a couple of these on. And so it was on. He didn't turn it on. Someone else turned them on. The customer with administrative access who was super dangerous within the FileMaker file. So it may not be you, but a nuke is going to go off. If you're close enough, you're still going to get hit by it, right? Do you suggest creating separate TOs to enable delete related record? That's what I'm saying, David. I created separate tables. And it and it, it, it filemaker didn't follow the context. It jumped context. You're over on a layout that belongs over here, a layout that belongs here, and you told it to delete this a record here. And it's and sometimes it'll jump up to a different TO and evaluate what the if it has a similar relationship, check to see if it's on there. And if it is, it deletes it. So your context is correct. It shouldn't delete the related record, and yet it does. And when I went back and I turned this off, I come down here and I would turn this off, then the problem would go away. And I'm, I'm down here. I'm never up here doing anything. I'm in layout that's attached down here. With so in theory, you would create a different TO, but in practice, it doesn't work, so don't. Well, yeah. If it, okay, if Claris, if this thing evaluated on the context correctly, creating a different TO per David Angel would be the answer. It'd be like, hey, we're back to this conversation of it's always the context stupid. It's always a politics. They always they beat with the Bush about this years ago. It's a, it's the economy, stupid. Okay, I should be a bumper sticker for FileMaker or a shirt or hat or something that says it's the context, stupid. <laughs> except for SQL statements to FileMaker and except for this, right? Got it. So it sucks. It is, but I'm not here to tell. I mean, the platform's great. I love it. If I didn't love it, didn't use it, I wouldn't tell. I'm just telling you, don't do this because you're going to have cause problems for yourself. Uh, Ken, do you have any suggestions for where not to put a bomb in your own file by accident because you didn't know any better? I've got like six or seven here, but I'm, I'm going to give you an opportunity I, I, to get one before I put my list. Well, um, I, I just remember you guys have talked about truncating tables before, and I, one, had never heard of that, but, boy, it certainly doesn't sound fun at all. Okay, truncating tables is my understanding that it works correct. Um, okay, so here's – okay, so this is a really great question. There's a command call. I think it's a script step. Oh, let me cancel here. Oh, let me just say, okay, actually, I'll keep the change. Please don't crash. There we go. Script workspace. So I have a file. No. And then I come over here. Member return return. I call truncate table. So truncate table, real quick, for those of you who don't know about this. Okay, let me back up and tell you the problem. It basically blows all the data out of a table. The problem with FileMaker is that if you have a bunch of relationships like this, so say you have one and it's got like 20 connections on it or some big thing. And then you tell it to delete the records. 
It's going to evaluate the relationships to see if it should be doing cascading deletes, one. Two, it's going to be evaluating other sh things, updating the index, things like that. It does a lot of maintenance as it goes. So as you delete, say you have to delete a million records, you might want to leave that one. Like I always tell developers, put two or three computers on your desk so you can have one that's working and then maybe the other ones are doing things like deleting a million records because it might take it a day to do that. A day to do that. It might take it a day to do that. Uh, especially if it's on a server. Truncate was created by Clay Mackle and probably with David McGee's help or a couple other people's help. Um, and basically what it is, is it, it just blows out the data out of that table without regard for anything else. It's like kind of almost sanitary. It's like if you chopped out, a, a ch chopped out just this and and, and, or actually at the table level, it's at the table level. It goes to a table and it just goes to the table and it zeroes it out, gone. It's very, very fast, but it doesn't like update like totals and summaries. Like if you have some someone else that's totaling and summarizing the data, it's not gonna do all the notifications. It's basically, it'd be great for like an audit log. Like if you were writing an audit log to FileMaker and you wanted to blow it out and you weren't worried about the audit log tripping other things off, you just blow it out real quick. Truncate's great for that. So it's a tool in the tool chest, but might not be appropriately used everywhere. And so one of the things that we talk about, the reason we talk about the nukes and FileMaker, people are like, can't you restore from a backup? Yes, you can always restore from a backup if you're using FileMaker server, right? And so one of the things that it, it happened to me the other day, I was getting a little aggressive deleting some scripts. I was cleaning up starting point and I over clean, I over clean starting point. I cleaned some things out. It still needed. Um, and so what ended up happening, I had to call Jacob, Jacob Taylor. Yeah, I know I'm the CEO. I got 33 years experience. I'm certified eight ways a Sunday. I screwed up. Jacob, can you just restore this file for me? And, and of course, Jacob gets a snicker. <laughs> the boss screwed up. He fixes it for me. He restores a backup from two hours ago or an hour ago, whatever it is. And so what I'm trying to do is, is give you things that will prevent you from having to call your server person, whoever that person is, and restoring from a backup. If you don't have a backup at all, then you're really living life dangerously, right? So um, the replace script step is another one that you got to be really careful about. I was just going to bring that one up because I just messed myself up with that one earlier today. Really? Okay. So what happens is if you click in a field here, it should be in here. It's not. I click in here and you go up to records down to replace. Replace allows you to insert a serial number or resequence serial numbers or to put a calculated result in that's kind of dynamic. So you write this result, you know, 10 plus five plus, you know, angel, David Angel. David Angel, right? 10 plus 5 plus David Angel. I don't know. That's some sort of great formula. I say, okay, replace, right? It happens to probably be a number field, so it didn't take the text, right? But the idea is that it does the replace across everything in the found set. There's no one due for this command because it's a, it's a literally, it's a, it's a carpet bombing nuke in of itself. It blows everything out of that, on that field for that found set. There's no undo. The undo is to call your server person and tell them to restore the backup, right? So that one. Or recap have, the information in the case of mine. I only had 12 records that I had. A oh, recap you're a lucky of. man. Lucky man. Yeah, it was it was pretty easy to, yeah. I mean, I didn't have to go to the backup, so. All but. right, other questions. Code to go. The line from Bart Simpson springs to mind. I don't, I didn't do it. No one saw me do it. And you can't prove anything. Exactly. <laughs> Ed Burkle says, I food bar my file with replace. Yeah, so what I'm, some of this is not a revelation to some of you. Some of you are fairly senior developers like Ken here. Ken's just here to keep me honest and keep me, keep things interesting, right? So another one is backups on FileMaker server. And so um, we, I got a lot of grief from this. We adapted a Star Wars uh, Stormtrooper uh kind of a homebrew project thing from years ago. I'm just going to play it for you real quick. You'll enjoy this briefly, but I got a lot of trouble for this because people thought that Star Wars should be violent. I said, what Star Wars have you been watching? How many times have they been chopping heads off and stuff? Let me give all of you a quick clue. This is where the show goes badly here, right? No backups. It's not just bad for the Jawas. It's bad for everyone. I joined the Empire about six years ago, and it's uh, been uh, really good because I, I started in, you know, kind of the enforcement part of the organization, you know. 
but I want to move up, but I want to show that I can make a meaningful contribution. I was looking at the available jobs, and I saw that Claris had a job opening to help in customer service. So I want to make sure I put up my video resume, show that I have really great customer service skills, and maybe apply for that job. Now, of course, I've been stuck here on Tatooine for these last six years, and this is the uh, end of the world of FileMaker. I mean, people that use FileMaker here, they're just out in the desert, and there's no respect for the law. So, you know, it's really tough. But I'm a compassionate kind of guy, and I want to help the common man as best I can, so maybe I can move up into customer service and I can make more of a difference. So we got a 911 call from uh, someone who says that their uh, FileMaker uh, server is down, and so uh, I'm coming up here to help them out, see if there's anything I can do to help them. Excuse me, are you two the ones that are uh, reporting the problem with your FileMaker server? Yeah, yeah, just walk over here. Come over here with your FileMaker server. So whose uh, FileMaker server is this? This is your FileMaker server. Okay, I see. And so uh, where are the databases on the server? Okay, so uh, you don't know where the databases are at, so uh, who set up your FileMaker server? Oh, it's your cousin. Your cousin set up your FileMaker server for you. Ah, got it. Uh, is this your cousin right here? Are you, are you his cousin? Come over here. No, you're not his cousin? Yeah, well then, uh, who are you? Ah, you're his friend. So, then, did, did you set up the FileMaker server? So, the FileMaker server, which is missing the databases, was set up by your cousin. But your cousin's not here, but your friend is here. So, uh, where are your backup hard drives on this, uh, for this, uh, server? You can have, a uh, where are the backup copies? Okay. So, there are no backup copies, no backups. So what I'm going to do now, sir, is place you under arrest for not having backup copies of your databases. Hey, am I talking to you? Am I talking to you? Then stay over there and shut your mouth. Now, if you move again and come over here, I'm going to shoot you. Now, I understand. Yeah, no, it's not your fault. You have a family to feed and you can't afford the backup drives for your FileMaker server. Now, I've got a wife and kids too, but you don't see me out there uh, setting up FileMaker servers without any sort of backups. Uh, yeah, sure you'll never set up a server again without backups, right? He's making a run for it. Oh, there goes the other one. He's gonna set up another server without backups. Okie doke. Uh, Shut off the camera now. Yeah, you shut it off now. So what we had here was a couple of Jawas who had uh, set up a FileMaker server without backups. And so, of course, there was no protection for them. And even worse than that, they had encrypted the file with an ear password, which is kind of a good idea, but you're supposed to write that down so you don't lose it. Because if you lose your ear password, then you'll never be able to get into your FileMaker file again. And so backups and ear passwords, I mean, these Jawas have to learn to set up the FileMaker server correctly. And unfortunately, it turned uh, kind of violent. Uh, it's just a really unsavory situation. Well, we didn't find the database we were looking for. But we did find the ear password. So hopefully you see how we're doing a great job out here and how I would love to uh, get a job and move up in the world and uh, work in customer service at Claris. Yep, that's what it's all about. Move so up fun. by shooting the customer. Yeah, by shooting the customer, right? Because it's the empire, right? So uh, it's a lot of fun. So we got backups of FileMaker servers. That's a really bad one. So all these are, if you're using FileMaker and you're on a server and you're doing development and it's getting backed up at least every hour would be my suggestion, then you can always roll back if one of these things goes badly. But if you don't have the backups at all, then you could really be talking about losing a lot of data and maybe you know, financial financial liability would be bad on that. So you don't want to do that. That's why the backups are so important. You have to check them periodically just to make sure they're running the way you want them to run. So um, another hot topic, another good suggestion for those of you out there. The, uh, the idea is to, when you're going to do a heavy amount, and this came from Christian this morning too, but if you're going to do a big edit on a layout, duplicate the layout first. Maybe do the work on the copy and so maybe if people are using the database, they continue to use the original one that you're not working on, and then you could potentially swap them out, but you don't wanna do the edits on a layout and not have an easy way to roll back. Remember, you can hit Command Z or undo 
on FileMaker Pro for Mac or Windows. It'll go back like 50 steps or 50 different little backup moments. But if you crash or get disconnected, then all those undos go away. So it's better to work on a duplicate copy of a layout. Same goes for a script. Duplicate the script, work on the revised script. Uh, that would be my suggestion that way. This is good stuff. So if you folks have questions, thoughts about uh, the things that keep you out of trouble, those are big ones. Another one I will simply lay out for you is the idea. Jacob Taylor was into this and the topic came up from Chris Moyer back in the, I don't know, like a year or two ago. They were talking about ransomware. So one of my customers, uh, interesting enough, they roll their own servers and they're doing some really interesting political kind of stuff not illegal stuff, but just political related stuff uh, here in the United States at the national level. So you can imagine how <laughs> how big that is. And so they were running their own servers and stuff, but we would do development for them. Then they would take the databases and push in production. So the apparently the other political group uh, 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 attack, somehow, some way, someone uh, anonymously, allegedly attacked their servers and bricked them. And I'm not clear on if they were bricked um, like with ransomware or they bricked them and you could never get them back. But this gets me back to this idea with FileMaker Server. And we do this with those servers that we've been rolling out for the last, say, six, eight months. But it's where as you write backups to Amazon, those backups are locked in concrete for like 30 days. Which Because what happens is if someone's going to attack you and try to ransomware your stuff, um, they go after your backups first. Even if they have access to your server, they won't pull the trigger and encrypt your server unless they can encrypt the backups, right? Does that make sense? Uh, because most people say, I'm not going to pay you the hostage, the ransom money. I'm just going to erase the server, build a new server, figure out how you got in, block that out. Um, and so, but if they can get to your backups and delete those, then you've got a big problem. Well, Amazon has this backup, uh, and off the top of my head, I'm forgetting the name for it, but it's it's immu oh, immutable backups is the word for it. Immutable backups, which means that Amazon will not allow anyone, even you, to edit the backups or delete the backups. Either A, you have to have a court order <laughs> to delete the backups, which I've never seen before, or B, uh, you have to completely close the account and shut it all down, which blows the idea of the ransomware because the ransomware, the idea is that they, you can still see your server, you just can't get to it. And if you pay them money, they'll turn it back on. So the immutable backups are great because um, they're locked in concrete for 30 days. So say if someone says they take your server down and and they they have lo you have a local backup just to have that, but you also back the Amazon immutable backup, the bad guys can't encrypt it. And, and you're going to catch the problem within 30 days. Like some, some people, they used to say, well, we'll just do immutable backups for 24 hours or 48 hours. If it's a three-day weekend over Thanksgiving or holiday and someone does it, you know, an hour after everyone walks out of the office, no one catches it till when they come back to work in a week. You know, you could have chewed through that uh, mutable backup period. So that's why even with our inter RCC stuff, we set it for 30 days. So at least 30 solid days of backups on that. Additionally, I'm just going to cover some uh, news moments at this point because this nuke stuff is important. But um, so Claris, uh, 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 Hansa, so 20.3 is out. There are some interesting features on it. I'm going to try to get Jacob Taylor here. Uh, that Monday, next Monday, to help talk about this a little bit. Claris is doing, seems to be taking their investment dollars and putting them back into the FileMaker platform, which for me is much more uh, compelling and interesting. They got a lot of new stuff on the pipeline coming, at least in terms of features and capabilities. So a lot of stuff we've been asking for, some of the stuff we have not been asking for, but I'm just telling you from my perspective, it's very, I'm very enthusiastic about the where things are going with this. Suddenly, the money seems to be pouring back into this plat this side of the platform, which is really great. I'm very excited. I think all of you will be excited as we go forward. Other questions, right? Kind of quiet. There's Ken, there's Foxy Jack. Uh, other potential problems sending copy of your database file to someone without closing it first. Excellent. Excellent. So let's go back and cover that one. So other bad things to do to your FileMaker file. Uh, um, deleting deleting records in general, cascading deletes, absolutely. Making sure you have backups. The relookup command needs you need to be careful with that. Um, if you're replace running, replace command. What's that? Replace command. Yes, replace command is a big one. I big guess relookup would come into there too, but yeah, not, they're kind of similar. Much. But replace is the one that people are more likely to use. Um, 
So I was when I'm showing people how to use the database and i show them that feature i always make sure and tell them you need to read the words at the very top of that dialogue window about what you're going to replace with what and to how many records yes and, and then of course i don't follow my own advice and click replace when i wanted to click replace the calculate by calculation and yeah yeah it's it, it can be horribly embarrassing especially if everyone thinks you're an expert and then you do something super uh, junior like that the crashing a database. So back again. So once again, if I log in, I'm going to do this real quick. This is the hot uh, topic for all of you. I'm going to go ahead and log into this server real quick. So real quick, if you're running a FileMaker file locally and you crash it, please don't continue to use it for anything important. It might be damaged. Okay. If you do your own FileMaker server installation, you want to make sure that you go over here to administration or roles or give me a second i got to figure this out wherever the part is where it says it has a checkbox use crash databases if possible oh here it is so you go to your on filemaker server you go over to configuration general settings it has this option right here automatically use crash databases because they're always safe and happy right mine is enabled it, right this the is supposed to be it. off. This is supposed to be off. I turned it on as a demo and then I left it on. I'm a I think you, Richard, I think you want the one above. Isn't aren't you talking about the one above? Automatically start the, oh, 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 sorry, that one. Uh, that one. Okay, I'm reading the wrong one. I'm not reading correctly. Automatically open database that are in the folder. Yes, this is the one. You want the service to start, the web publishing engine to start automatically. Persistent cache off. So these, once again, this persistent cache is basically they're trying to do the auto resurrection, right? It was the feature that they had startup restoration, right? Remember, and it was destroying things. So they kind of went back and kind of revisited this. They're trying to make it. So what they wanted to do is that, right, while I make, it's and it's deadly serious. If the FileMaker file it crashes, it could be damaged, i.e. it wasn't close properly or maybe the, the the computer was in the middle of writing some data and it wrote half the data then it quit it, it, it couldn't finish it so you have incomplete data writing so if the filemaker server crashes you always restore from a backup people people are fundamentally lazy they don't want to do that and so they would prefer the filemaker files a never crash and if they crash they always crash in such a way that they're always amazingly reliable and nothing's ever wrong with them what they what these two features are down here is an attempt to make this feature up here uh not a landmine right so because what happens is if you have this on and we had a customer in louisiana in fact i was in louisiana at the time this is a year and a half ago i get this call i'm at the hotel parking lot in slidell louisiana overnight and what happens is is that the customer uh they have thunderstorms there they have battery backups but what happens, the battery backups, battery was getting weak, so the power would go out. After about three or four minutes, it would kill the power to the FileMaker server. So the FileMaker server, if someone just kicks the cord out of the back, then the power comes on, the, the battery backup comes on, the server says to auto restart. So this thing was auto starting and stopping itself once or twice a week during the winter or whenever they had a lot of rain, which is frequently in Louisiana. And so eventually it got to a point where the file wouldn't open. It said, please open it. And, and FileMaker server, when it tries to open a file, it does basic diagnostics to see if the file is coherent, right? <laughs> is it is it alive? Is it even talking English or whatever language you want to talk? Does it make sense? And, it, and FileMaker server determined, hey, something's really wrong with this file. It does, even though it tries to open it, it can't because it's damaged. And so the customer did this to themselves. When, and when big saw pony show, dog and pony show about trying to get this thing cleaned up for them, find the corruption, export the text data out, all sorts of things we do to try to fix that, but it's very time intensive. It costs money. So this has to be a feature that you turn off, leave it disabled. Having the server, thank you, Ken, for straightening me out, having the database server engine start. The FileMaker, basically, it's it, it, after a restart, the whole FileMaker server should come back up. And if you go to database, all the database, databases would show closed because these are the databases that were damaged, right? They would all be closed. They would not be out of open. And so people come to work and they're like, hey, FileMaker is not working. It's not reliable. We have to restore from a backup. You have to go in there and do a little bit of work. So Claris is trying to get to the point where you don't have to do that. It does it for you automatically. It's still 
based on what I'm saying is not complete yet. So currently, please, 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 don't have, don't that automatic, turn that off. Because otherwise, people it'll come on automatically. They use it. You get the work. You get late. You've got a doctor's appointment. You get to work at one o'clock. Someone says, "Hey, did you hear about the power outage?" You're like, "Oh, really? What happened to FileMaker database?" Oh, we're just using it. it's fine. Well, it may or may not be fine, and they're using it. And now because they're using it, they've made changes, and you don't have the opportunity to go back and restore from a backup, right? This is this is trying to stop the horses from leaving the barn before it's on fire or after it's on fire, whatever you get the idea. You don't want people using the crash database, putting fresh data into it, because it's one thing for it to be down on Monday and they can't use it, they'll do something else for a little bit. But if it's but if it's running and they put data in it and then you have to fix it and you lose their data, <coughs> no bueno. And they have to redo it, yeah. They have to redo the work and then they, once again, then they have your phone number and they're gonna call. Hello, what's going on? Questions? Is, is running on DBS could be AWS. My server right here is actually on a Mac Mini. This one right here is my personal FileMaker server on a Mac Mini M1. Uh, in fact, it's always, I bought the M1 with 250 gigabytes of, of drive space. And I thought that'd be plenty, but I've got a data set that's 40 gigs, mostly documents because of all the aviation documentation I have as an instructor pilot. I keep a lot of the, as, it's one thing if you're just a pilot, but if you're an instructor, you have to keep a lot of books and documents and all sorts of stuff. So um, on your personal server, do you have a, like an external where the backups are stored or are they set stored on the same internal? No, no, the back. Oh, no, 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 no. Didn't I just see the Star Wars movie where the guy got shot for not having backup drives? It has it has a, a set of backups. Let's talk about my backups, my personal. It's just me. Um, so the on-demand uh, auto backup, auto backups right here are where Claris does one once a day, every day, or at midnight. This is what these are, these automatic ones. Schedule backups are the ones where we schedule, Okay. So I have one, it says on the boot drive. So I keep, in fact, it's running right now, interestingly enough. Uh, it keeps- uh, Just turned about, over the hour. Yeah, just turned over the top of the hour. So it says to succeed there, you saw it go. That's the boot drive. This is the internal SSD. I have three external solid state drives that are connected with USB 3 or USB 4, whatever it is, high speed USB, like super high speed. And they're separate drives. Plus I take an offsite one periodically, okay? Okay. But the idea is that there are a total of four drives that have databases in them. The reason I, I don't have just one is I've had, had situations before. I don't know what happened. It was actually a Mac Pro. I've had once ever where I had three drives fail in parallel. And they weren't RAID. There was a power spike. Something happened. I had three drives die, like wow. popping a balloon simultaneously. That's happened twice ever in 33 years. I've had seven or eight times where I've had two drives die at the same time. I've never had four drives four drives die at the same time. So that's why I use four because that keeps me protected. I also use an offsite every week or two weeks or a month or whatever I do. I take one and put it on a, a drive, then I put it offload it to Amazon or something like that. But I personally have bootable or not uh, their drives were writing copies of these things. So like, if you look at this one, SSDA, uh, this one right here, actually, let me just go over here. I'll show them to you real quick. Connect to DB. I'm going to actually remote into the machine. Uh, that's another one we want to do is this virtual private network stuff that I use. The zero tier? Zero tier stuff is bad. And uh, It is. So here it is right here. It's hard to see it kind of over here. Are you using zero tier? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Did, yep. did Jacob put you onto that? I heard you guys talk about it. You oh. and Jacob talk about it one time, and then one time when we were doing some server work for me, I asked a couple of questions, and uh, yeah, it's how I VPN into my work or wherever I am. Yeah, from it's a whole it's level of of, the, of deflector shields against bad people. It's really nice. Um, so this is the boot drive, three external solid state drives that are not part of RAID. They're separate, but they're solid state drives. They write pretty fast. They write mm -hmm. pretty fast. So my data set, if I look at one of my backup copies of my data set, here's my databases. This is from shoot today. But if I go over here and say, pop it up, it's going to calculate the folder, calculating the size, because there's like 50 or 60,000 files in it. I've been collecting files in here for a while. Um, and the total snapshot size is about 40 gigabytes. Keep in mind that the hard linking is functional. Hard linking is where 
it we talked about this i don't know a week or two ago where it writes a copy once on the drive and the hard drive keeps track that if it keeps writing identical copies of the same file it only it doesn't keep rewriting it just makes a reference to the one copy oh. uh, there it is 40.65 gigabytes and it's mostly container data through external stored encrypted data containers all right labo did you know filemaker is used by lucasfilm to track continuity of star wars universe a database put together by leland e chi called holocron covers over fifty five thousand work care plans weapons i had no idea but that would make sense i went and interviewed for a project work at lucasfilm back 20 years ago but i wasn't sufficiently snazzy for them and they <laughs> end up hiring someone else to do the work but walking into lucasfilm where all the all the artists and creative types were doing stuff in there blew my mind because they would uh in their spare time build life-size life-size uh props and stuff and at the time i was in there the aliens uh, movie had come out the second aliens movie had come out with sigourney weaver and at the end of that movie she's she's driving a mech that's like a forklift a, a modern day forklift that's a bipedal mech thing and she's fighting this queen thing they had a life-size perfectly recreated painted version of that thing sitting at the end of the hallway with its lights rotating lights on that's it this is her and so she see she's so they had one of these things it was light in fact this is what it looked like it was at the end of the hallway and the lights were rolling and everything they had a a mannequin or someone stuffed in the cockpit of this thing it was off the hook someone had built that in the weekend or over a week or a couple of weeks or whatever as their project just for fun because they believed in their mission so much at lucasfilm really great group of people down there all right well that's it oh it's called the p5000 powered workloader <laughs> who knew all right folks that's it for today tomorrow awesome sauce we'll continue with the filemaker platform once again learning and how to stay out of trouble is important tomorrow will be new awesome horizontal i think it's a horizontal portal but it sounds like a pivot table. So I want your folks, when you're done, I want you to shoot a review to support RC Consulting. Let me know what you thought of the show. See if you liked it. If it made sense, it'll probably be a little deeper, more technical. So if you like deeper technical, that's tomorrow. All right. It's also uh, on Gauthier Day tomorrow, the anniversary of the first uh, manned hot air balloon flight. Back of in course, you would bring that. The first hot air balloon flight. Manned flight. Yeah, because they flew without people and then they flew with animals, but... Yeah. Tomorrow, 1783. Anniversary. And whatever floats your balloon, right? Floats your boat, right? Floats your balloon? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 1783. That's a long time ago. All right, folks. You have a good one. I'll catch you tomorrow. See you. Bye. Bye. Filemaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the Filemaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir.